Okay, I should be recording now. Cool, so hi everyone, hope everyone is well. Thank you for joining our talk today for Digital Leaders Week. Um, so this talk will be led by our Chief Operating Officer, Tim Ebenezer. And before I hand over to Tim, I'm just gonna briefly introduce the company and the topic of our talk today. So who are FSP? We are a digital transformation consultancy that combines real world experience in business strategy, change and adoption and digital solution delivery. FSP have a number of engagements across both public and private sector, helping organisations to transform the way they work and accelerate the opportunities provided by technology. Our expertise in cloud solutions, data and AI, business productivity applications, cybersecurity, business change, and managed services helps our customers to deliver on their organizational goals. So for about the next 30 minutes, Tim will provide an overview of how the cloud can accelerate delivery and capabilities of defense and public sector organizations, drawing on his own personal insights gained from his experience of operating across the defense sector over many years. So as you know, this session is being recorded, so will be available to listen to on demand for any that people that can't attend or are attending later. Um, the talk will run for about 20 minutes um, and then there'll be a little bit of time at the end for the questions. So if you guys can use the Teams hands up feature and we'll um, try and get around to all of your questions at the end. Yeah, so I will we'll hand over to Tim and I hope you enjoy the session. Lovely, thanks Anna. Um, hope you all can hear me okay. I've had a, uh, a, a wonderful morning of uh, of disasters and it's, um, um, it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's really interesting sort of not being in the room with people and uh, I, I'm sure many of you are used to you know used to talking to groups of people and uh, I always find it's, it's it's a bit interesting trying to um, you know trying to feed off the energy in the room when you're presenting to a presenting to a phone as I'm doing now I also had the delight of this morning my uh, my internet connection um, going down in my house so I'm, I'm on my 4g on my phone um, and uh, you know, it's 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 good. It seems to work. You know, this is this is the new world, isn't it? This is this is COVID times. So, uh, really glad you've you've made the time. Whether whether you're watching this back on the recording or you're or you're with us now, really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to come and listen to us. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be talking hugely about FSP and what we do. I think Anna's probably given you the the high level overview, and uh, uh, and and that's as much as it's going to be today. But really wanted to take. You know, 20 minutes or so uh, of, of your time today to talk a little bit about our experiences of uh, transformation using the cloud in defence, what that means, what are the uh, what are the opportunities, uh, what does that um, you know what could that mean in terms of future opportunity for the defence sector? Um, because I think, as we all know, this is a relatively relatively new for a or, or new in terms of defense terms anyway where where we're sort of uh, 10, 10 years ago is still is, is is still very fresh in our fresh in all our minds uh, but just to introduce myself quickly so as it says uh, on the side my name's tim I'm, I'm the coo at fsp um what that means in reality is i'm, I'm a consultant for about 50 percent of my time and, and, and work on the business uh, for the rest of my time and um in particular, in particular, I'm really interested in in cloud and its potential to transform uh, different uh, uh, different industries and this whole concept of digital transformation. And I, and I thought that's where I'd start and talk a little bit about what 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 digital transformation means means to me at least. So um, uh, if you just go back a back a slide, Anna, you see on the on, on the right hand side, there's um, uh, there, there's a picture of the grade sheet, and I just wanted to, to let you in on a little story from from my childhood. So I was, um, as you can imagine, uh, a, a precocious child, and um, at school, I, you know, I, I, I did I did reasonably well. Um, and, and at the end of every term, we'd get a grade card from our teachers. And I, I don't know, if, I don't know if other people got the same. I've never really, never really uh, found out if there was much consistency out there. But we used to get two grades per per subject, so. Um, you know, we'd go through and you'd get, you know, you get your maths, your, your maths grade, your English grade, your religious studies grade, um, and uh, and you'd be given two two marks. Your first mark was from an A to an E, so that was what was your achievement like during that term? Was it an A, absolutely brilliant? Was it an E, not so not so great? And, and it had a spectrum uh, there. And and the other the other mark was an industry mark, uh, was a one to five. Um, so. Uh, one meant you'd put in lots of hard work and five um, 
think the term was you were you were dossing um, was was how we would put it back back then, um, and and so as you can imagine, you know, coming home with a with a grade card full of uh, full of A ones was uh, was absolutely brilliant, and coming home with with E fives wasn't wasn't so great. Um, but the uh, the one thing I was very proud of during my school time is. Um, is 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 in Latin uh, class uh, one year, and yeah, I went to a school that uh, that taught Latin. That probably tells you tells you something about me. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's good or bad. Um, so one year, getting my Latin report, I got an A5, and I, I was really really proud of that because uh, what it meant was that I'd put in very little effort and still managed to uh, still managed to smash the results out of the park. Now I thought that was a great result. Uh, my mum didn't agree with me, and if you uh, if you know Indian parents at all, you'd uh, you, you can imagine what happened after that. So um, it, it was a it was a really interesting uh, experience. But actually, for me, that that A five talks to what what I think digital transformation is all about, and what transformation is about. It's all about reducing the amount of effort whilst ensuring the uh, ensuring the results stay really high. So again, as a, as a precocious teenager, when I was going through my A levels. I don't remember this, but a few of my friends have told me. Apparently, I had a saying before every uh, before every uh, exam, which was uh, which was minimum effort, maximum results. Um, and uh, I, th I think that's that's no longer my no longer my motto. But certainly, when it comes to again digital transformation and what we're looking for from uh, from digital transformation, I think that's what's uh, that's what's really important is trying to ensure that as uh, as teams as organisations we can put in a lower level of effort and get a higher level of output. And so, um, just a little bit about my background with uh, with, with the defence industry. I've uh, uh, I, I spent I've spent probably the last uh, seven or eight years um, working with with, with defence clients in various guises. Uh, before that, I spent about ten years working in in, in other industries, uh, starting writing CAD software in Assembler, um, and 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 moving on from there. And I've always been really uh, interested in fast paced software and systems delivery. So, the you know, it's it's been called various things, um, SRE, DevOps, Agile, at, at different points. But this idea of delivering value quickly and making sure that um, uh, uh, systems and services are delivered well and can be improved on really well is something that's really really important to me. So if we, if we move on to the next slide, please, Anna. Co coming into the defence industry, and I, I think. For those of you who are in the defence industry, you, you'll certainly have, uh, have seen this. And, and for those of you who are just just interested, it's one of those things that, that I didn't realise. But but when I first sort of landed a job, and and, and the, the 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 job might have, should have probably been a clue to me because my first job in defence was uh, delivering a piece of software from 2007 in 2014, um, and. Uh, that, that probably gives you as much clue as, uh, as as I should have had, but of course you come into it with this expectation that uh, you know you're you're in the world of 24 or you're in the world of NCIS, and in reality, of course there is a you know there's a, there's a, there's a harsh truth to, um, to 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 where defence IT has certainly been in the past, whether that's you know within the Ministry of Defence or, or out in the defence contractors, and I think whilst there are some very impressive systems, there are some very impressive engineered products in the defence space. Uh, IT has been, you know, a, a real story about um, high effort and probably you know, realistically low impact. Um, and so I, I was involved in, in, a, in a few different things while I was in, um, in defence, but, but one that I was really sort of um, uh, proud of working with the working with the MOD back in, in 2015 and 16 was being part of uh, being part of the team and uh, being the, the 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 CTO for part of the consortium that took um, took took uh, took MOD into the into the cloud. So working very closely with with colleagues from Microsoft and uh, and other partners within the Atlas consortium that I was working in at the time, uh, working on the deal that that, that Mike Stone struck with uh, with Microsoft and the Atlas consortium to take uh, to take uh, MOD to the cloud. And that was seismic because not only was MOD going to the cloud, but it was going to the cloud ahead of other government departments, which typically in the past defence has never been. And and so equally, the the this idea of expectation versus reality has in the past been very much you know the expectation of uh, of of defence is to be really high tech, and the reality has been a bit low tech. 
I mean, similarly, I spent quite a bit of time working in the in the deployed space with deployed systems and, and colleagues in, in, in caution on, on various aspects of deployed systems. And, and, and the reality was that there were you know, fragmented stovepipe systems in this space. Um, but um, the, the, the vision and the opportunity was that we could get much closer to that expectation. And I think this is where I think, you know, if any of you have been involved with, uh, with, with defence for any length of time, you'll have seen that there has been over time a really heavy focus on, on infrastructure within programmes. So whether it was when it was working you know, in the deployed space or in the fixed space or, uh, or, or, or after that in, in, in many of the sort of programmes uh, that are that are sort of uh, that come out of either equipment programs or specific um, applications led programs, there is a huge focus on the infrastructure that supports uh, that supports these applications, and for really good reason. Um, often, often they, you know something very specialised was wanted. But what I noticed more and more, and I'm sure what many of you will have noticed, is that over time the amount of time spent spinning up infrastructure, creating new builds, creating you know, racking and, and stacking new uh, new servers has has made has, has taken an inordinate amount of time away from being able to deliver capability for 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 for, for defense customers, whether that's for the MOD or whether that's internally into into defense contractors. And whilst many platforms had the concept of being the final platform or a generic platform, so working on defense information in infrastructure, DII, um, you know, back, back, back sort of uh, seven, eight years ago, that was the intent for DII was to be a platform that, that could be used by other programs. But unfortunately, this just hasn't been the case. A platform hasn't been provided in the past. And it's great to see work towards this now happening with ModCloud and with, with some of the, some of the uh, new outputs from Emporium starting to come to come to reality but the reality is across across defense we're still very much at the early uh, at the early part of the story and what's really interesting to me is how particularly in the last uh, last couple of years i've seen cloud make a big impact on on how uh, how defense organizations start to uh, start to engage with with transformation and and equally this has been really true with the defense contractors i think defense contractors have lagged a little bit behind uh, behind the MOD, MOD took a really good lead in, uh, in in 2015 onwards, with starting to strike out on the path of uh, on the path of cloud. And rather than overtaking, it's been a little game of catch up for for many of the defence contractors, certainly the larger larger primes, who have been spending a lot of time again looking at their large investments in in, in sort of infrastructure that's supporting their uh, that's that's supporting their their, their businesses. And, and not necessarily looking at those opportunities. And again, over the last couple of years, I've started to see, we've started to see a, a bit of a change as we've worked with various customers in that defense contractor space and with, and with MOD on parts of this cloud transformation. And I think that, that sort of new dawn that we put on the slide here, this, you know, back in 2014, when the government security classifications changed, I think that was a real, uh, a real milestone point in terms of paving the way uh, for, Changing behaviour and changing attitudes towards towards risk and how um, and and how uh, information risk is is looked at in defence and therefore what the risk or opportunity of looking at at cloud could be and so I think this is one key change that really paved the way to future transformation opportunity in defence and where we are today. I think we're in a really good point that defence could be on that verge of starting to make take a you know, make a real step change in terms of transformation. So just wanted to have a real quick look at well, what does what does transformation look like for organisations? What does digital transformation um, uh, uh, contain? And I want to talk through sort of five postures that that I've noted of uh, of, of 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 transformation uh, and organisations sort of orientation towards transformation. So firstly, we have static organisations. So this, uh, and I'm thinking about this in terms of organizational units that are trying to be transformative within businesses. The, the, first, the first posture they can remain in is, is a static posture whereby the, the part of the organization has a level of inertia and really delivers no value to the, to the business, no value to the wider organization. And this is the typical sort of 
IT department keeping lights on only, you know, very much um, uh, lights on over innovation type agenda that that that, that can exist. And I think, you know, in the main, my the encouraging observation is that I, I come across very few organisations that have a static uh, a static posture towards transformation. The next two are, are, are two that I think you see more commonly. So the first is a reactive posture. Um, so a reactive posture that looks uh, you know, reacts to you know areas of obvious inefficiency in, in an organisation and, and addresses those through very technical solutions mm -hmm. and a tactical uh, a tactical um, organisation, which again along very similar lines to that reactive uh, nature has a continuous way of targeting organisational efficiency, but is very focused on those areas that are that are that are obvious and nearest at hand. And then you have those more strategic organisations that have created, crafted a vision that is driving forward the organisation and can actually go and discover inefficiency. So we're in a reactive and tactical world. It's about actually going and uh, you know, responding to either the you know either the, the, the cries of pain in, in the organisation or going and you know uh, uh, doing that in, you know doing that with a, with more of a uh, with more of an agenda with more of a uh, more of a methodology this strategic idea that you know we can be out there and actually discover an efficiency and help to uh, help to drive forward um, the organisation actually having a vision and a strategy that that's framed inside is something is something slightly different and then of course you have those innovative organisations that are creating new ways of doing business. So where functions within the business, typically an IT function when we're talking about digital transformation is actually coming up with new ways of doing business, using the potential technology and not simply targeting weaknesses in the business today, but looking at the business of tomorrow. And that's really where I think in this strategic and innovative space is where Cloud has perhaps struggled and suffered in defence over the past few years, and also where there is opportunity and where new capabilities can be can be created by really harnessing uh, by really harnessing the power of cloud. So just very quickly, what what has cloud got to do with all of this? What's cloud got to do with transformation? So I think there's the there's the obvious point, which is, uh, yeah, as, as as we touched on previously. The amount of focus on infrastructure and government programs, in defence programs, in uh, in defence contracted programs has been huge, and and there is an opportunity for platforms to sit under this and and to enable much more focus on delivering capability. Yeah, you know, as we know, too many defence programs get bogged down in hardware, storage, networks uh, delivery, and, and and spend you know a far smaller amount of time actually thinking about new capabilities to deliver to to, to to customers and to to boots on the ground as it were and so you know where in the past you know i've been involved with programs that were delivering you know uh, i don't know a handful of nato applications into uh, into into a part of the, into the part of the mod but spent probably 90 percent of the time delivering an under, un, underlying infrastructure platform because there was nothing else that could take those applications so where at the moment there is a significant level of investment from mod into mod cloud on Azure on AWS, what what there is an opportunity now to do is is capitalize on that as a as a concept and start building capability on top of this. So taking you know, both those larger defense contractors and and smaller players in the defense space on that journey of starting to deliver actual capability that are services that can be used by uh, by, by service personnel, by others in the um, uh, by others in the defence space to actually um, to actually do their job better, to actually bring new ways of working I into the space, and, and and this idea of spending far less time on the on the infrastructure should give us a lot more time to focus on actual capability development, actual concept of operations, concepts of use, and how that can uh, Im impact in a very positive way the defence landscape. So appreciate it's a very it's a very short time to pack a lot of uh, a lot of sort of um, a, 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 a lot of change over a lot of time. But I think this is a, a really good time to be having this conversation because what we're seeing is more and more defence organisations start to take uh, start to take um, the idea of cloud transformation seriously and the idea of velocity much more seriously. And I think 
the, the, the opportunity that cloud presents to defense is an opportunity of velocity, an opportunity of moving from firstly IT, whether that's IT sitting in Corsham or IT sitting in the uh, in the IT department of a defense contractor being seen as static or reactive to it's being seen as a leader, being seen as strategic, being seen as innovative, and also seeing that movement from uh, from 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 very long cycles of of capability development to much shorter cycles of capability development, and I think what I've seen is you know organisations that start to get on the front foot that start to think about uh, th think about where where are they driving the business that you know organisations where IT is starting to think proactively about the function of the business whether that function is you know the life saving of um, of, of the MOD or whether it is the services provided by a by a defence contractor thinking about that purpose really re really clearly and starting to form a very compelling and real forward plan for change for the organisation empowered by technology and so you know no, nothing better than giving some sort of concrete you know, how how can we how, how could how could we how can we take this forward in individual organizations i think the the, the one thing working with several particularly defense contractors that that, that that i've noted is the need for a compelling vision uh, that tells a story beyond just the large equipment programs or just the large um uh, uh delivery programs that that that, that are at hand but a compelling vision about change for the future. And, and, and a key part of that is that the customer is changing as well. So if the main customer is the MOD or if the main customer is a, uh, you know, is a set of defence contractors that are working together, that, that environment is changing and having a vision for what next looks like is really important. Defining those tangible steps. So whether it's uh, the first three steps, I've put three on there, but really, you know, any transformation is about is about eating the elephant. It's about you know, taking those next steps, understanding what's next on the uh, what's next on the roadmap, and then one business outcome is the other piece. So, yeah, it's great to have that end state vision. It's great to be able to see a few steps in front of where you are. But the thing that really transforms businesses and the things that really really transforms any environment that. Uh, 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 that, that, that wants to see value from transformation is seeing those business outcomes being being achieved and tying those back to metrics. And I think, again, this is where there is an opportunity through cloud, through the velocity that cloud brings to show real, tangible, fast business impacts. Um, what one organization, uh, one organization we've been working with uh, has, has, has seen a massive impact from a simple Cloud transformation of 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 some internal business processes has cut down significant time from the uh, corporate memory function of the business in terms of responding to uh, particular types of uh, statutory requests, particularly type particular types of information requests, and that very tangible example has been held up as a case study, and you you create that 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 energy of adoption. And I think this ability to quickly change is something that not only is incumbent on on us as probably largely IT professionals to be to be uh, to be to be making sure we champion in our organisations, but it's also something increasingly we're all coming to expect. So clearly, cloud isn't the be all and end all. You know, tr transformation is far bigger than cloud, but I think there is a real um, a real opportunity from uh, from cloud in in, in defence today. Uh, it's becoming, you know, sort of more and more prevalent. Whether that's, uh, you know, cloud working at at OS, which is, you know, which is now very much accepted and 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 and, 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 and possible and, and and increasingly becoming the norm, to some of the more innovative applications of using cloud at, at higher classifications. You know, this this is a really exciting time to be to be working in this space, and um, you know, I think. There is an opportunity now for anybody working either as a defence contractor to be changing what they do, be changing behaviours, and to be being a better being a better supplier into you know into a customer that's changing. And equally for the MOD who are on this journey to keep delivering those uh, those business outcomes and and ensuring that wider and wider through through all the programmes of work that that go on across the MOD that the cloud is being taken advantage of. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there because I've been probably witching on for, for longer than I should. And, and if there are any questions, more than happy to answer them now. If, if there aren't any questions um, right now, but you, something burns, 
and comes to mind uh, as you're in the shower or on your dog walk or, or whatever you happen to be doing, please do drop me an email. Um, we'll be passing out the uh, some contact details with a, with a follow up from this session. But finally, just want to say really, really appreciate you taking the time this this lunchtime to, to come and listen to us. Um, hopefully there's something in there that, that, you know, that may have may have sparked an idea or two. And as I said, we're always happy to, to, to have a conversation um, about any you know, anything interesting um, uh, in this in this space. So we'll give it give it give it a few seconds. But if there uh, if there are any questions, please do feel free to either just take yourself off mute and shout out, or or use the hands up feature as Anna mentioned. I'm going to stop the recording now. Lovely. Thanks, Anna. Well, thank.